Hey everybody, welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. My name is Virginia Willis and I'm a chef and cookbook author based in Atlanta, Georgia. And this is Cookbooks with Virginia. It's on every Friday or near about every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube. And then after the fact, I upload it to Instagram. So you can hear from my voice that I'm a Southerner and I grew up in the South. I grew up in Georgia and Louisiana. And you know that we are famous for Southern food, Southern cooking, and Southern hospitality. Well, I have truly, truly one of my favorite people on this whole entire planet here today. It's Rebecca Lang, and she has written this incredible new book called Y'all Come Over, Charming Your Guests with New Recipes, Heirloom Treasures, and True Southern Hospitality. Y'all are going to love this book. If you haven't met Rebecca yet, you're going to love Rebecca. We've got some great tips and techniques, and we're going to talk all about how to make entertaining easy, because I think that we've gotten a little out of practice all this COVID mess. So let's bring Rebecca in and say hello. So now we've, we've doubled the Southern accent. Now it's come <laughs> even twice. So if it takes 30 minutes, does that mean it really takes 60 minutes? Probably, yeah. So yeah, get comfortable. Because <laughs> I know I heard myself say something yesterday on tape, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I really." You don't think about it until you hear it, though. Rebecca, well, you can't really even hear it. Like other people can hear, it, but when people are like, well, "Your accent is so strong," I'm like, "Is it really?" And they're like, "Yeah, it really is." Yeah. Like, yeah. You want to hear a strong accent? I can. We can introduce them to people with a strong accent, can't we? We could. That would be super fun. That's a whole other episode. That is a whole other episode. Well, I love you to pieces and I've known you forever. And we're both Natalie Dupree chickens and just truly, truly just love you to pieces. But please tell folks that are watching a little bit about yourself and how we are here today. So I grew up just like Virginia. I grew up in Georgia and I grew up in a town called McRae, Georgia, which is in South Georgia a little bit more south than you, Virginia, slightly. Um, and I went to, I love to eat, love to cook. I learned from my grandmothers who both were in the kitchen all the time, never using a recipe. But uh, my grandmother, we called Tom, my mom's grandmother, had Natalie Dupree on TV all the time. So Natalie Dupree was like this close to Jesus. And I really, I stayed in the kitchen because I love to eat and cooking was a means to an end. And um, I went to the University of Georgia to major in journalism because I knew I wanted to write about food, go dogs. And I called Natalie Dupree, which is a whole story we won't get down the road to, but I wanted to do what Natalie did, Natalie does. And nobody at Georgia really had an answer for me on how to do that. So back when there were landlines and phones connected to the wall, I called 411. Do you remember 411, Virginia? I called I the remember the 411. With your cane, yeah. yeah. And I said, I would like to, you know, be connected to Natalie Dupree. And they connected me to Natalie Dupree. And I was a college kid in Athens. I didn't know Natalie from Adam except on the TV, which, you know, of course means I knew her. Yeah. And Natalie answered the phone. And it scares me to death to think if that one day, I, I remember sitting on the carpet in my apartment making that phone call. If I'd never made that phone call, I swear, well, first I would have never met you. I would be working in a cubicle somewhere, not doing anything passionately that I love to do. And Natalie took me under her wing and held me tight and told me, you know, to go, I worked for her for about a year, go on to culinary school, learn your stuff and then get to work. And so after that, I went to work as a cookbook editor and then started writing cookbooks not long afterwards, but. All right. So show them, let's like do a double yeah. duty with this. Okay. So, so do you know where the title came from? This is awesome. So friends of mine and I were sitting around the table. This was when we first started thinking of this and couldn't think of the title and couldn't think of the title. Well, we were drinking wine, of course, during this whole conversation. And we were like, well, if I called you, what would I say? I would say, well, y'all come over. You know, anytime I invite you over. So that's where the title came from, because it really is 
what I would say. I mean, that's what I say. No, that would be completely yeah. it. So we've got some folks here with us already. We've got Terry Grooms. Hey, Terry, how's it going? And sweet Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Oh, Wendy. oh my gosh. We hope, I hope you and Bruce are well. And then Beverly is here. She's a friend of mama. So Beverly, mama's going to have to catch it later. She's really sad, but we're glad you're here. And Rebecca, we already have a question. So I'm going to okay. ask a question because this is all about y'all. This is all about entertaining tips. So welcome, Rebecca. What you, should you always have in your pantry or freezer to be ready for drop-in guests? Okay, that's a question. Super good question. Um, because now that COVID hopefully is letting us gather a little bit more, the things I keep on hand all the time are really good jams and jellies, but I don't keep just sweet. I always, always have spicy. Like I talk about pepper jelly, Crystal Leach, who, you know, too, makes the world's finest pepper jelly. The, like the best on the planet. Right. I yeah. mean, it's so, so good. good. Yeah. Um, but I keep, I usually keep two or three really good cheeses that have long shelf lives in the fridge, because if you put a jam and a really good cheese and a nice cracker, I mean, it takes five seconds. I also always keep in the freezer little things like in the in the book, I have key lime tartlets, mm -hmm. but I also keep right now in the fridge, I have the tartlet shells that I make and freeze. And if somebody pops over, I can just put a little lemon curd in those shells and call it a day. I don't have to make the filling that's in the book if it's in a hurry. No, sure, sure, sure. That's so um, awesome. And always salty, salty like olives. I always have cheese straws even just purchase cheese straws that are good yeah that keep that you if you put out a spread of enough different little things nobody's ever going to guess that that took you seven minutes to literally scoop it out no it's true and i think i remember this like ten thousand years ago from like working with martha stewart you know even martha with her millions of elves the hors d'oeuvre book she kind of created this scenario like you don't have to buy everything you can and of course we know that Plenty of Martha's recipes are laborious and hard right. to find ingredients. But she also was like, have good store-bought nuts, have good store-bought crackers. Like, I think that that's important. I'm, I'm like sitting here still impressed that you said that you made your own little tartlet shells because, because, right? I mean, it's like, right. but, but good for you for doing it. And, and then you don't have to, right? Like if you feel like, you know, they can certainly be purchased. I mean, I think that obviously the ones that are purchased aren't as good as the homemade. But like you said, like seven minutes, like just some cheeses and snick snacks. And and there you go. The little phyllo shells that are so yeah. pretty, that's something that's in my freezer all the time. But I usually put in those, like I'll just chop up a few olives and a little bit of cheese and a touch of mayonnaise. Uh huh. And that goes in the oven for like 350 for five minutes and it looks like you spent all day doing it but those no, if you keep little shells you can put all kinds of stuff in them no that's wonderful that's wonderful i'm actually going to make olive um olive spread later today so y'all we have started talking about this fantastic book y'all come over and i want y'all to win a copy okay so what you're going to do is you're going to go to my instagram and you're going to like me and like rebecca and if you already like us both that's fine that's great please. And thank you. And uh, if you don't, please um, check us out. You're going to like us both. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose a winner on Monday morning and you're going to get a copy of the book. And I'm going to ask y'all for those of you that can share it. I really would appreciate um, that if you post and share, uh, there's a lot. Rebecca and I both have lots of fun stuff going on. So if you can post and share our uh, business, then that would be great. All right, let's see. Oh, we've got, we have someone who's trying to hack it. So let's not do that. <laughs> he didn't know what he's getting into, does he? No, he may run away quick. Who knows? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about y'all come over because gosh, it's been a long time since we've been able to say y'all come over. I know. I mean, hasn't it? And so I wanted this book to be a guide from the very first minute you think I may want to have people over. Good to the second that you close the front door and turn on the dishwasher. Wow. So there will not be any question in your mind after you look through and read the book, of uh, anything that you don't know how to do at that end. So even in the invitations, you know, I talk about when is it acceptable to text somebody to come over? When do you need a paper formal invitation, which I love some paper y'all. Uh, yeah. And then when you get into 
planning it. How much are your guests going to eat? How much are they going to drink? Which is always the magic question. And how to have the house ready. Like I feel like so many people wait on their house to be perfect. And they're worried about, um, do I have the right furniture? Do I have the best rug? Are my plates pretty enough? Nobody cares. So if you're waiting on all of that, you're never, ever, ever going to have a party. All of us have stuff in our house that we don't like. And your house is never going to be surgically clean if you live in it. So I talk about in the book places to really spend your time cleaning in your house before people come over and the places they frankly don't care about. So, you know, if you're if you're going crazy with the Swiffer, people aren't looking at where you're Swiffering, where you're not Swiffering. Where they do look, and you're going to agree with this, is the powder room. Y'all, it has to be, I mean, tip top spick and span. Because that's the place, no matter how much people are eating and drinking, they're in the powder room and they're alone and they are looking. So that's where you guys are. I love this. I love it. I yeah. love this so much. And it's, it is so entirely truthful. I mean, it is, it is accurate. It is real. It is truthful. And how many times have you been to a party and you've been like, like the food is fabulous, but you're like, oh my. You know. So many times. Yeah. If people are judging you, they are judging. I'm pointing because my bathroom is that way. If they are judging you, they are judging you in your bathroom. They're not judging your food or your sofa or anything else. It's the bathroom. So that yeah. has to be really good soap. It's like a place, you know, if you can get $10 soap, get $10 soap. Like get the good soap, put out what I have here. These are my favorite things to have in the powder room. They're yeah. like, especially now, especially yeah, now. Disposable. Because right now, nobody wants to share a towel. Nope. But make sure you think through little things that happen. That sounded terrible in the bathroom. But yeah, look after the bathroom. And then that's the first place to, to start thinking about when having a party. Rebecca, I love that. And that's the whole thing. It's like real life tips, like real life practical, you know, because I do think too, and you and I are both aware of it is um, everything just looks so perfect on Instagram. Everything looks so perfect on Facebook. And we all know that that's taken like, you know, a dozen people a half a day sometimes to really? make that photograph look like that. And a lot and, of money. Um, and it's time. Yeah, and it's just it's yeah. style over substance. And this, y'all come over, is some real substance. Well, sweet, sweet um Wendy is asking, and I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of this. This would make a great holiday gift. Is Rebecca signing books anywhere soon? That's an awesome question, Wendy. So I've been signing in three different states in the last um several weeks. And what we can do is I have, I should have put one up here. I had, um, if I'm not in your area, I had these beautiful book plates made that actually are an image of the bottom of this page. So if y'all want to uh, message me on Facebook or comment or on Virginia's post or anything, I have them, they're big stickers that are the exact photograph. And I can mail you signed book plates because a lot of time a book plate is like a white sticker yes. that looks like a white sticker. So I have this exact same photograph. We stick it on and I sign it and it's much more cohesive with the rest of the page. Oh God. So that's the way I can do that. And anybody can give the book for Christmas, Wendy. So you know where to find me and I'll put you some in the mail. That's so awesome. Yes. And then, um, but, and I'm sure too, just, so first of all, it's available. Everyone needs to just check with their local independent bookstore for books, right? Right. So at most local independents, it's at a lot of different gift shops, like home stores and gift yep. shops. Yep. And of course it's on the big um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all that stuff. But yep. the place where the book is really flying out the door is in these home gift shops. That yes, are, sure. Because it's got so much home information in it. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's been a great place to sit and visit with people that have questions about their table linens or their. Oh, no, sure. Well, that's so wonderful. And I know that you did a signing a couple of weeks ago in Augusta and my mama got to come and she was so excited. Mm -hmm. And she said that she's going to take a friend with her. And she said, I don't know if my friend will buy a book. And I said, well, mama, if you buy a book, that'll be great. I said, but I know, and I know that, you know, you know, sitting at that table so much and not knowing anyone. It's just such a wonderful thing to get to see a a friendly, smiling face. Oh, it is. And you know, it's been so nice because I think everybody's so excited to get out. Yes. Yeah. Go to a shop and meet an author. 
that this go round, this is my eighth book. I have met more people and visited with more people than I have in the past where you may sit there. Right. You know, for a few minutes right. and not. Oh, that's over. so nice. Well, Carol, so Carol Blackwell is saying, Rebecca, your kitchen is so gorgeous, so warm and inviting. It really is, Carol. You shouldn't, I've had the fortune of getting to be in Rebecca's kitchen in real life and it's, it's just so pretty. And Carol, this behind me, I'm so glad. This, so I've kind of pointed sideways in the kitchen today. This is the um, famed biscuit counter. So this counter is two inches lower than this counter. So I can roll and it's marble, so it stays cold. But you know, a rolling pin for an average size person on a high counter is a little, you just don't have quite the leverage. So that's like the best place in the kitchen. But I turned it around so y'all could see some of our festive little stuff. And these are gingerbread houses that the children made, gosh, when they were four years old. And I keep them all year, like sealed up. That, that was kind of melting, but that's where they came from. But you'll see them back there. So, Oh my God, that's so cute. I know. I think that when you, when you told me that you were putting in a biscuit countertop, um, I was fully equal parts, like in awe and then like consumed with full jealousy. I, I'm just going to tell you. It was like, part of me is like, oh my God, she is so awesome. And the other part of me is like, Hmm. <laughs> okay, so below the microwave here is a drawer that I learned when you let me come hang out in the Martha Stewart kitchen for a few days. <laughs> it's like this deep and it's filled with parchment sheets. And it's like my dream drawer because a flat parchment sheet, everybody should have in their kitchen in some place. Even if you have to kick out sheet pans, put in. Yeah, no, those are wonderful. Those are wonderful. All right, well, let's talk. I knew this was going to happen too. So let's talk a little bit about um, y'all, the recipes. So she's got, Rebecca has tons of incredible um, tips and techniques. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about your recipes. You've got, um, it's just so many of, of little bits and nibbles and stuff like that. What are some of the favorite ones of yours from your book? So the ones that I make probably the most right now are in um, the everything y'all is divided up into menus. There are eight different menus. And so I kind of take everybody through the day. Yeah, those are awesome. Those cheeseburgers are so good. Um, so lately I've been making more out of the morning menus. So the crepes that are make ahead night before crepes are crazy good. I'll make those like 50 at a time. That's um, awesome. The coffee cake is in that same menu. So during the holidays, I feel like, especially now with people coming over, I like to have breakfast. We entertain more at breakfast during Christmas season. Yes. People are spending the night here. Yes. And having breakfast ready in the morning is so perfect to not get up at the crack of dawn and have to put together breakfast. No, sure. Right. You need stuff that you yeah. can make ahead or even like a breakfast strata or a casserole or something like that. But I love yeah. the crepes idea. That's so they're nice. Sturdy. They're a lot more sturdy than a normal one. Yep. And you'll see this, Virginia, in, and I think this is probably where you learned it too. So Natalie Dupree, y'all, was very adamant about timelines. So when you start to have a party, if you write a timeline of exactly when you want to do things, you're not that woman that opens the door with a towel on your head and a bathrobe. And so in every single menu, I have a timeline on the menu page. And I even tell you things, this part down here, I even tell you things like when to turn on the dishwasher beforehand, when to take out the trash, because it needs to go out before people come over. Yes. So any of those things that you don't really think about beforehand, if you follow my timeline, you are the happy, wonderful, relaxed person that opens the door. Oh, uh, and it's, it's so important. important. It, it is so important. I think that that's part of it. I mean, I think that people get so stressed out. And the thing is, is that when you're entertaining, if the host is stressed out, no one can have a good time. I don't care how clean your bathroom is, and I don't care how good your food is. Right. You're. That's exactly true. And I feel like, too, when the host or hostess is stressed, then I want to make you feel not stressed if I'm at your house. And I would say, let me come help you do this and this, which may make the stress worse. And I, we're big, Kevin and I both feel this way. If you're over here, you will not wash a dish. I don't want you to come to my house and have to clean up. You clean up enough at your house. 
So when dinner or the party or whatever time of day we're entertaining is over, you go home and relax. You don't come in the kitchen and help clean up. We never, mm -hmm. ever clean mm -hmm. in front of you. So you don't feel like you have to say, can I help you load the dishwasher? No, no, no. I understand. I don't, I don't, I have to admit I'm always, not always like that, but usually when I don't do that, it's like family supper. It's not a party. Oh, totally. You if you're related to me, you can load the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're related. yeah, no, no, but I understand. And that does make sense. Cause then also if someone says here, let me help you. That means that they've noticed that you're stressed. And then that, like you said, it makes people more stressed. Well, the photography mm -hmm. also just really just so incredible. Oh, so pretty. And Virginia, I don't know if you saw the page. Y'all, I'm really proud of my sweet girl, Adair. But Adair uh, is listed on the copyright page as an illustrator because she illustrated this page. We talk about... Um, a, having a table ready for children. And if you see on the side with the I hearts, you on. Adair did all the hearts. That's page 83. And she, we got these cool little art pins and she used it. But Adair, um, for everybody that doesn't know, is my 12 year old daughter and she's super artistic. But so she illustrated this page. And also, we talk about how kids. Once they're able to write, I have a, a lot of information on thank you notes, which are super important. But Adair wrote a thank you note um, to one of my friends that gave her a gift. And I think it's a big deal that children learn to write thank you notes. You know, they yeah. write their thank you notes. Yeah. But she was so excited to be on the copyright page. And I thought it was so, so wonderful. No, and that's true. And um, while I didn't have kids, I mean, who hasn't been to an event where the kids are kind of acting rambunctious or something. And it's like, it's not their fault, really. It's the fact yeah. that it wasn't planned accordingly. They just need stuff to do. So I talk yeah. about things yeah, that they just need busy. Yes. And, you know, they also need to know how to behave when they go to a party, which is something that parents will do. Yeah, um, look, there's, there's our dear friend, Cynthia. Oh, hey, ladies. Hey, Cynthia, I miss you. I know. Y'all, so... um. Cynthia and Rebecca and I and Ann Bird and Kelly Linton, we, the, uh, the, the five of us, is that the right number? Yeah, the five of us, math is hard, Barbie. Um, the five of us uh, uh, cooked at the Beard House for Natalie Dupree's birthday um, two years ago. And I have, a, I think that picture that I posted is of us outdoors at the Beard House, but we also have one in that fancy bathroom. Oh, yes. I was in the bathroom. Yeah, with all the mirrors. Wow, out, that was so great. Was so oh, I'm so proud of Adair. That's wonderful. So, y'all, this really is, this is an amazing book about, it is not just a cookbook. It is really a, like a lifestyle book, an entertaining guide. Um, I, Rebecca, I love you even more for having a, a funeral menu. You are so smart. Well, growing up, just like you did, Virginia, when people pass away, you know, it's within minutes that food starts coming and, yep. you know, you, you've got to be ready for food to come and you've got to, after a funeral, what we've always done is everybody gathers at the house and you have a big meal Yep. and you pull out your good stuff. You pull out the China, the silver, whatever it may be. And that's the way we do death in the South, which is crazy we couldn't do any of that during covid you know it was hard yeah, for no it's rituals are so important for humans right 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 but yeah it's, it's so important so okay so i would love for you because this is just so awesome two things everybody you want you to go to my instagram page and you're going to like me and like rebecca and enter and win a free, free book and then rebecca what i would love for you to do please is i think that you've assembled some of your favorite entertaining tools i have yes i have all my goodies here okay so y'all one thing that I love. This is a wine bucket, but the cool thing about it is wine buckets sweat. So if you have a party, and I talk about in the book, if you have a small home or your kitchen is uh, too filled with whatever you've got going on and you need to make a bar on a piece of furniture, the good thing about this is it's so insulated. It's made by a company called Brex, but it's so insulated it will not sweat. So a lot of times you can't put a bucket of ice and anything on top of anything you don't want to get wet, but this yeah. makes it possible. And then if you're running short on ice or on time or refrigerator space, which can happen to all of us during the holidays, and you forgot to chill your wine, 
put your wine in a bucket with just a small amount of ice. And Virginia, this is the same concept as if you're doing ice cream. Mm -hmm. You're literally putting some salt. That's just kosher salt in it. Yeah. And spin your wine around just a little bit. That'll keep it colder. And in 10 minutes, that wine is at the temperature that white wine should be. It's super, right. super easy. Okay. This is about to blow you away. Are you ready? I'm so excited. Okay. Now, it is not attractive. This is something you do in the kitchen, not for your friends to see. Okay, this is a heating pad. So y'all know the kind of heating pad your grandmother had or your friend Rebecca has to put on her back. <laughs> My grandmother, I have one too. I have this, I have multiple. No, okay, the thing is, y'all, you have to go buy a new one. You can't use the one that you keep in the bathroom. So go to go to a drugstore, get one of these, take the fabric off, which slips off. So this is nice. Um, plug it in. You can put it on high or low, whichever one you think works best for you. Put it on a sheet pan and you can cover this with a pretty towel or foil. When you're making things like pancakes, waffles that are coming off constantly, especially on Christmas morning, and you need to keep them warm before you serve everyone at once. Because a lot of times with pancakes, you're pulling them off the stove and they go out the kitchen. Yeah which is not fun for the person cooking because they don't get to sit with everybody. Correct. Heat this up, put this on a sheet pan, cover it with um, foil. And as you pull off pancakes, they go straight on here and it warms from the bottom and it keeps everything warm. You can even put a kitchen towel over the pancakes, over the heating pad and keep it warm. But that's not something you want to put on the buffet because it's not pretty. And then you saw these at my house and they... Um, Yes. Okay. So y'all storing stuff during entertaining in sheet pans is going to happen. Every time you have a party, you're going to need to store food, cookies or tartlets or whatever it may be on a sheet pan. And everyone needs a rimmed baking sheet, period, final, the end. Everyone needs oh, a stack of them. Like five of them. Yeah. And so this lid, you buy the restaurant supply. How cool is that? So it so literally cool. makes your sheet pan stackable instead of you trying to push this together with foil and it makes a mess everywhere. And now and that, that stackable part is the part that is so key. Yeah. And so I, I use the quarter sheet pans a lot, the little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My last thing, I know you and Tammy Cook were over here and your mom and I said something about the sheet pan lids and y'all were like, what? And so we went downstairs and found them. And I remember y'all were like, my life just changed totally. I know, I know. So I do mostly only stemless wine glasses for parties because they're easier to wash, easier yeah. to store, less breakage when people knock them over. Yep. And I try to buy them when I see them in these boxes that are storage boxes. This is from World Market. Uh-huh. And so I keep them in the basement and I always have wine glasses I can bring upstairs when I need extra. Yeah. So if you have a little box of 12 glasses, it goes a really... Yeah, long way, and you don't have to take up room in your kitchen. No, I think that I do that too. I think that that's so important. Just like having some, and it, you know, people like see it. I'm sure they and they think, oh my god, you like cater. I'm like, no, it's just it makes sense not to have entertaining. If you're able, it makes sense not to have your entertaining stuff mixed up with your everyday stuff. Yeah, because you know, every day I may need four wine glasses. I don't right. need twelve, and I, I have a right. really small cabinet that does right, work, but right. Yeah, so this anytime you can get something in a box to store away that's ready for it, it makes entertaining easier. No, sure. That's so that is so good. Okay, so the 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 heating pad on the baking sheet for the pancakes and waffles, absolute genius. Absolute Isn't that crazy? Genius. That is so smart. And I love I love that because you're exactly right. You know, it's it's so nice to have something like that during the holidays, but you're right, you're someone's there being a short order cook, and by the time all the pancakes are done round one, two, and three are already putting their plate in a sink. And, yeah, the, and you haven't even eaten yet. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Your dad or had to eat standing up, you know, cooking pancakes. Right. So it, it, that, that process alone makes pancakes for entertaining hard. And this makes it doable. Yeah, uh, Cynthia's like restaurant depot run VA, that's for sure. Yeah, no, I know. I, yeah, those lids for the uh baking sheets are so smart because stacking is important. Oh, yeah, otherwise, a, a baking sheet, like you know, if you're if you're doing cookies, baking sheets are impossible if you can't 
Right. Stack them up. Right. No, that's true. Okay. So we've got the salt and the ice water. We've got the um, clean your bathroom. We've got a heating pad on. Clean your bathroom is the smartest. Clean your bath. Put a heating pad on a baking sheet. Lids for baking sheets. And then storable glasses. And if you kind of hit any of those points, I think that you're well on your way to being able to say, y'all come over. I think so too. Just just starting with the bathroom, y'all come over. Let's and we can work <laughs> on that later. Oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. I, I, I've done it again. I get so excited. I forget to talk about stuff. So I want y'all to know if you want more information about Rebecca and where to find her book and to sign up for her social media and and all this wonderful stuff, you're going to go to little RebeccaLangCooks.com. And um, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna ask. Do you, does anybody have any questions for Rebecca before we leave? And then lastly, Rebecca, I've got a couple of questions for you while we see if it comes in. Um, I wanted to ask you just a couple of quick questions. Sour, salty, bitter, sweet, or savory? What's Ooh, your favorite? I should have been ready for this. I know. Uh, savory, savory. Savory. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it too. And then um, and then who are some of the folks like you've been all over in these shops and gift stores and stuff like that? Who was someone else's book that you've seen lately that you thought was kind of cool? You know, Ann Burns' new baking book is uh -huh. crazy cool. I think it's amazing. Dory's new book is, oh, yeah. I just made her cookies, which she was on with you not too long ago. Oh, yeah. Her cookies that she slices and bakes in a muffin tin. Isn't is, that genius? That kind of stuff is like, why did that never occur? So I made those probably two weeks ago, and they almost have like a shortbread. Right. They're chocolate chip, but they taste like shortbread with chocolate right. chip. But because they stay in the muffin tin, they're perfectly round and beautiful. No. no, I know. I know. That book is on that Baking with Dory book. I wrote, we were going back and forth with her and it was like, the the world rejoices when Dory Greenspan uh, writes a book because she's yeah. just genius about it. But I'm rejoicing when Rebecca Lang writes a book too. So Rebecca, thank you so much for coming on today. It was just oh gosh, this was so fun. I know, I know. It's sad that it's sad just to see you like this, but I hope to see you in real life soon. And I love you much, and you have a happy holiday. Love you too. Happy Bye. holidays. Love to you, Pete. Nice to see you, everybody. Isn't that wonderful? Oh wait, I went the wrong way. <laughs> You're so. I went the wrong way. I was just going to turn it into the Rebecca Lang cookbooks with Rebecca Lang. So y'all, thank you so much for watching today. Um, once again, my cheeks hurt from smiling so much. I want y'all to head out and uh, check out Rebecca Lang's book. Y'all come over. Um, super important to uh, support uh, cookbook authors if you like to cook. So um, go to her website, check it out, Rebecca Lang Cooks. Um, it's available Amazon, Walmart, all the big retailers, stuff like that. And then, but don't forget to to check out your local independent bookstore. And Rebecca will be more than happy to send you a signed book plate if you go to her website, Rebecca Lang Cooks. Who's up next? I can't figure out. I can't remember who's up next. So we'll just let you know next Monday. Thank you so much for watching and bon appetit, y'all. Bye-bye now.